It's The Real News. I'm Mary Mate. President Trump is standing by his policy of separating immigrant children from their parents. The United States will not be a migrant camp, and it will not be a refugee holding facility. Won't be. You look at what's happening in Europe, you look at what's happening in other places, we can't allow that to happen to the United States, not on my watch. The number of children separated from their parents has escalated in recent months, topping more than 2,000 since mid-April. The White House has made clear it sees this as an act of deterrence. If children are taken away from their parents, then that will convince migrant families to not take the risk. This is Attorney General Jeff Sessions speaking to Fox News. Is this policy in part used as a deterrent? Is it, are you trying to deter people from bringing children or minors across this dangerous journey? Is that part of what the separation is about? Fundamentally, we're enforcing the law. If you in, break into the country in an unlawful... But is it a deterrent, a, sir? Well, it Are you does considering that, this a deterrent? I see that the fact that no one was being prosecuted for this as a factor in a five-fold increase in four years in this kind of illegal immigration. So, yes, I hopefully people will get the message and come through the border at the port of entry and not break, break across the border yeah. unlawfully. Now, while the separation of immigrant families is Trump's policy, that does not mean he is the first president with a harsh policy on immigrant families. Trump is only intensifying the criminalization of immigrants that began long before him, including under his predecessors, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Joining me is Cesar Garcia Hernandez, associate professor of law at the University of Denver and publisher of the blog, crimigration.com. Welcome, Professor. If we could start with what is new here under President Trump, certainly uh, not the detention of immigrant families, and also separation has happened before, but how has Trump intensified the separation? Well, thank you, Aaron. It's a pleasure to be with you. I think one of the uh, innovations that we've seen in the Trump administration's immigration enforcement policies um, recently in the last few months is the um, wholesale embrace of a policy that um, appears to have a little concern for the human cost of, uh, of, of policing immigration law, um, no matter what the toll is on children, on parents, on families, on, on other core values that are a part of the U.S. legal tradition. And in fact, um, what makes the U.S., has made the U.S. since the end of World War II, the, the standard bearer for the human rights tradition among, the, uh, um, um, among Western nations, um, that their concern is to uh, bring a heavy hand to immigration law enforcement, um, seemingly without its limits. And let's talk about then how we got here. Um, many Democrats uh, are voicing outrage about uh, this Trump policy. You had all the uh, current living first ladies, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, uh, weighing in um, with protests about the separation policy. But how, in your view, did even Democrats lay the groundwork for what Trump is doing now? Well, I think it's right to criticize the Trump administration's family separation policy, but I think it's important to not lose sight of the fact that the Obama administration and the Bush administration before President Trump preceded um, the family separation policy with the policy of detaining families, of detaining women, mothers alongside their children, locking them up by, uh, behind barbed wire. Um, that, to me, sounds like a nightmare. I am in the privileged position of being nowhere near experiencing that kind of trauma, but it certainly sounds like a nightmare to me, um, and I'm uh, I'm not interested in weighing one nightmare against another nightmare. Um, uh, but but the, the the fact of the matter is that the uh, Bush administration and President Obama uh, uh, strongly both strongly supported detaining uh, uh, families, and in fact, the Obama administration built the family detention uh, um, network that is still operating to this very day. So let's go back to the 1990s, even before Bush, uh, to Bill Clinton, because he oversaw uh, some harsh uh, laws on immigration. And I want to play a clip of him uh, speaking in his 1995 State of the Union speech. All Americans 
not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more, by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. So that was Bill Clinton speaking in 1995. And the following year, uh, he signed into law the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, um, which did as he promised there in that speech, uh, radically increasing uh, so-called border enforcement and also um, intensifying the criminalization of immigrant-related offenses. Professor, can you talk about how uh, this infrastructure that, that Clinton laid, especially when it comes to, to criminalizing immigration offenses, drastically uh, in increasing the number of people who could be, drastically increasing the number of people who could be uh, uh, arrested, charged, and deported, um, led to what we're seeing today. Now, President Clinton uh, oh, oh, presided over a series of uh, reforms, immigration law that expanded the number of people who could be detained. In fact, the number of people who had to be detained by what was in the Immigration and Naturalization Service, the predecessor to today's ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement Agency. Um, and likewise, um, presided over an expansion of the number of people who could be deported um, for a host of, uh, of criminal activities, but also for or um, uh, um, engaging in um, immigration law violations that were unrelated to to um, criminal activity, um, and 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 in, and most imp more importantly, though, I think is the way in which President Clinton spoke about migrants as uh, posing a burden on the United States. And once we frame migrants as a burden, then it makes it only makes sense to try to limit migration, try to control migrants, and try to uh, police migrants, and that's in fact what's happened um, in every administration uh, since, since President Clinton's time in office. Obama, who oversaw more deportations than all the presidents of the 20th century combined. And on this front, I want to go to a clip of uh, Janet Morgoya. She was the president uh, in 2014 of the uh, National Council of La Raza, the nation's largest Latino advocacy organization. And she called Obama, very famously, the deporter in chief. This president has been the deporter in chief. Any day now, any day now, this administration will reach the two million mark for deportations. It's a staggering number that far outstrips any of his predecessors and leaves behind it a wake of devastation for families across America. Jenna Marguia of the National Council of Araza speaking in 2014. Professor, what do you think was the political calculation here between, behind uh, Clinton and Obama's immigration policies? Uh, did they see it as, as, as necessary to basically sacrifice immigrant communities uh, for the sake of winning over voters who they thought, who they calculated wanted tough immigration laws? I think that was part of the calculation at the beginning of, of their terms in office, in particular talking about the Obama administration when they were hoping to convince some, some Republican members of Congress to go along with a comprehensive immigration reform proposal. But by the end of their time in office, um, six years in, say, um, it was quite clear to everyone um, that that wasn't going to happen, that Republicans had absolutely no interest in coming to the negotiating table in any meaningful way. And, so it, and, and yet they continued um, not only deporting record numbers of people, but also detaining record numbers of people. The, the Obama administration presided over the largest immigration detention uh, system um, in, in the nation's history. 
um, and uh, and that's often overlooked. And so I think the only just the only explanation that I can come to is that they believed it. They believed that this was the best way of doing it, or that they were at least incapable of stopping it. And if we believe J uh, John Sandwick, who uh, was for a time the head of ICE under President Obama, he referred to the uh, the number of people that ICE detained under under his watch, under his leadership, as being beyond control. That they they could not limit how many uh, people. Uh, they had uh, in their custody. Um, and so that suggests that the system is just operating on autopilot. And, and that is rather um, frightening because what we're talking about is um, human lives that are locked up and um, billions and billions worth of uh, dollars that we're spending every year to make that happen. So in terms of continuity, you talked about Obama presiding over the largest uh, expansion of, of family detention. So then is it fair to say that a major difference between uh, Trump and Obama is is not that they are detaining less families, but only that now under Trump, instead of keeping the families together in, in these uh, family detention facilities, that they're separating the families. And also, when it comes to the, this issue of deterrence, we heard Jeff Sessions talk about before that they see this uh, this policy of separation as a deterrence. But is that not is that is that not also the rationale used under Clinton and also Obama as well that, that these harsh family detention policies, border enforcement, were also going to be a deterrent to migrants fleeing persecution and violence in their home countries? As with so much of the Trump administration's immigration um, policies, they've taken um, a, the the nightmare that migrants lived under President Obama and thrown it into overdrive, uh, and so so they haven't in any way um, substituted family se family separation for family detention. They've simply added. Um, onto family detention, the system of family separation, um, and then done, done so by borrowing the very same justification that um, that the Obama administration's top officials use to to rationalize uh, uh, family detention. Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson told Congress that the reason that they needed to detain families was that they could deter other families from coming to the United States. Um, lawyers for the federal government who went into courtrooms um, were making similar arguments uh, um, until until federal courts uh, slapped them down and said, actually, that's just not a legal basis for detaining this individual. The hope that you might convince some other individual not to come. Um, and so, so the the uh, the Obama administration eventually uh, uh, um, changed its uh, legal rationale, but they never shifted. Uh, their policy uh, policy objectives or, or, or what they were accomplishing um, when it came to detaining mothers and children behind barbed wire. All right, we'll leave it there. And of course, we'll continue to cover uh, the Trump administration's family separation policy uh, in the coming days. But we wanted to start with a look at how we got here. And uh, Professor Cesar Garcia Hernandez, we thank you for uh, providing us with that. Cesar Garcia Hernandez, okay. Associate Professor of Law at the University of Denver publisher of the blog, Crimigration. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.